Thank you for joining today's Corel Draw Master Series webinar. In this video, we'll be covering various ways to mimic embroidery for your designs, logos, and pretty much anything you wish to apply these effects to. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, to start, let's uh, switch to a new page, and um, we're going to go ahead and cover some of the real simple effects using nothing but the default attributes that can be found here in uh, Corel. So, since this is a Corel webinar, we are going to type in Corel. And now that we've got that in there, I'm just going to do a quick center and then make it a little bigger so we can see fairly easy. Due to the customizations, you'll notice that um, things are a lot easier. So, over here on our Docker bar, we're just going to click this little circle and we're going to open up the font playground. Uh, I'm just going to show you this real quick. Um, but essentially you can go through and add different fonts and see what they're going to look like before you use them. I already had a couple of them in here and just by clicking the add another sample you can go in and find all kinds of different uh, fonts. Um, another couple ways you can use this since you've already selected your fonts here if you click your text here, the most recent fonts that were used will show up uh, just like in previous versions. Or, with your text typed in here, when you find the one you want, you can just drag out and it is edible text. So, I'm going to go ahead and use this one. And I'm going to do a little bit of kerning adjusting and just to uh, satisfy my kerning little issue there. Uh, I hate it when people don't kern fonts. It is just a, it's a major pet peeve of mine. So we don't need the font playground anymore so I'm just going to go over here and get rid of that and we'll close these dockers to get them out of our way. Um, I pre-selected some colors so let's go ahead and uh, we'll fill this one with uh, pink. And I'm not going to go into the color palettes right now. I'm currently, I just selected colors, drug them to my document palette. Uh, I've covered color palettes, color styles, and, and similar attributes in previous webinars, as well as the other Corel Draw Masters covering those as well. Um, so let's go ahead. All right, first thing you want to do is, you know, with your text or object is just going to go ahead and open up the uh, outline pen which is F12 shortcut for those that like to use the shortcuts and we're going to go ahead and add a outline I'm going to go ahead and choose my color down here and I'm going to scale with image we want round corners and round line caps one of the neat features Corel added to the uh, X7 graphics suite is the positioning of the outlines. You can put them on the outside of the object, the inside of the object, or the middle position, which has been the default um, for many, many previous versions. This is a huge added simple little feature that is a, a lot bigger than many will will think it is um, and depending on the methods that you're working with as far as vinyl cutting and things like that that can come in really handy uh, as well as depending on fonts and so forth so um, forgot to uh, mention the one main reason and so now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go to the style drop down menu and we are going to pick one of the dashed little uh, outlines right here so you know there's all kinds of different defaults and the cool thing about Corel is you can create your own so I'm just gonna pick one of these dashed and see how it looks and that looks alright uh, but personally I think uh, I would like a little bit larger stitch so we'll try the next one underneath that. There we go. 
That looks good to me. <clears throat> now, this right here pretty much is the example I was going to show you. Um, but one of the features, you know, with embroidery is um, usually there is going to be. Let's get this closed real quick. I'll fill it, and I'm going to remove the outline. Send that to the back. Usually, there's going to be a little bit of a uh, material on both sides of the stitch and embroidery I believe this would be considered a running stitch so there would be material on both sides um, so in order to do this feature what we would have to do is duplicate this object uh, plus uh, plus key on your number pad and then what we would do is we'd go ahead and change this back to a default outline and I'm going to go ahead and make this twice the size four points shift page down to move that to the back and then I'm going to make the outline the same fill and that gives us that effect I just described and just so you can see, uh, let me zoom back in. I'm going to open up the object manager. And here we go. We have two different texts on top of each other. <sighs> and then you could take this even further by the next step that I'm going to show you. Um, I'm going to show you this with or contours rather than outlines. Uh, mainly due to the fact of if I used outlines we'd have to multiple duplicate this Corel text object a bunch probably five or six more times with varying size outlines and if you forget to scale with image and or accidentally forget to convert one of them to curves it's going to cause issues down the line uh, especially if you send to another another artist it can it can really wreak some havoc so I I normally stick away stay away from outlines and except for when I'm doing something really simple like this um, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, select both of these objects and copy them and paste these to a new page and I'm gonna do a control s save just in case should always save quite frequently. Um, you never know if you're going to do something funky and uh, crash, crash, crash your computer. Um, depending on the objects and the nodes and what type of outlines you might be trying to put on, uh, it could really wreak some havoc on your on your system. So always like to save. Um, now let's see here as you can see we have these two objects I'm going to delete the one at the bottom and I'm just going to position this top one back at the in the middle I uh, just hit control or just hit the P key on my keyboard and that puts the object that's selected in the center of the page that is a default um, hotkey you can go under tools customizations and change all the hotkeys to however you want as well as um, create all your custom custom icons and macros and goodies and buttons and all that stuff as you can see my workspace is fairly fairly customized um, I've added a lot of my own features, icons, and so forth. Makes life a little easier and every little button you can save, every movement and every fly out you don't have to go through, it all adds up. Um, now back to the webinar. Depending on your your objects, um, as you can see, you can get, you know, we don't have a little space right here, so you might have to adjust that outline a little bit. I don't like that. Um, I like this size so and that's due to the way the font was created so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a quick weld uh, hit the W key on my keyboard uh, another default hotkey and that just converted this text to an object It is no longer edible text and I can start cleaning up some of these nodes so what we're going to do is switch to the shape tool over here on the toolbox F10 and 
up here on the property bar depending on which tool you're using the property bar is going to switch to the attributes for that tool so we're going to go to the select all nodes and it has selected all the nodes and down here on the bottom it says we have 153 nodes on five sub paths so if I just click this reduce nodes real quick just now dropped it down to 119 nodes on five sub paths and the sub paths are all these little inside areas <clears throat> we'll go through and see see what the deal is with with any of those um, but what I like to do after that a lot of times just that default select all nodes click reduce nodes is going to do the trick for you is this, if you noticed I just did it again and it dropped it down to 114 from 119 so, um, but I usually go to the slider and keeping a close eye on the original object you can start adjusting these getting rid of more of these nodes and pretty much you want to try to keep you know you can only go so far or else you totally change the, the look of the uh, the object so you have to go in increments and that still looks pretty good not pretty not bad so now I'm gonna go in here and you know this right here these are a little too close there's really no need for those two I can just come into this little area and adjust that and pretty much keep the same look same thing with this right here if we made that smooth that might have fixed it I'm going to undo and then just delete it and that totally changed the shape so I'm going to add a node here delete that and that's close enough right there our stitches and so forth here are a little close so I'm going to move this over a little bit give us that kerning uh, effect again and just kind of cleaning everything up so if we go to select all nodes again you can see we've reduced it even further to 33. So we started out with 153 and we got it down to 33 nodes. That right there is a considerable amount of node reduction, which ultimately is going to help and save a lot of issues down the road. <coughs> so <coughs> let's see here. So now that we have this cleaned up, I'm going to do the contours real quick. And I'm just going to switch to the contour tool. I've customized and pulled it out. Um, it's found right here in the flyout off the toolbox. But you can pull it out and move it anywhere in the draw space that you like. Um, I have it right here. And I'm just going to go ahead and drag this on out. Since it's interactive, you can you can do it this way or you can go in here and start playing with all the features up here on the property bar since there was an outline on the original object it's going to apply that same outline to the contoured object so we'll have to break this contour part and that way we can remove that outline um, open up the properties manager real quick as so you can see right here we have our original object and the contour and I'm going to switch to the pick tool and select the object and hit control K and now you can see we have two different curves two different objects I'm just going to select that outer one and remove the outline and go ahead and reselect it and give it the same color and now we just mimic that same look and so by using contours I only have one object with an outline as opposed to uh, multiple objects where I'd have to you know like I said before you'd have you know maybe a dozen objects stacked on top of each other so a lot less stuff to have to worry about and so there's our quick and easy way of doing the um, the outlines and uh, gives a quick easy good look um, I'm gonna go ahead and move this up here <coughs> put another one 
and we're going to take this a little further. We'll ungroup this. I'm going to grab this bottom one. This group up here is the one up at the top. So let's grab this. And let's see here. Click show all properties. That way you can see that this one has an outline and this one doesn't. <clears throat> a lot of features inside this object manager that's a very good tool to have open. Um, work with layers uh, and just sit here, click add a new layer. We'll put that original one up there and I'm going to go ahead and hide it and zoom out. You can't see it. If I bring the eye back on and zoom, there you can see it. So layers are a great thing. Um, especially when building a uh, very intricate design you're able to keep things organized a lot easier that way so now we're gonna go back select this bottom one and I'm gonna clean up the nodes on this one as well I don't like this little area so I'm just gonna do a little quick cleanup nothing major I, that's probably gonna be good enough yeah, let's just do the slider real there we go and you can see some of these nodes that look bunched together those are the ones that can be that can be an issue there's no need for that to be hooked like that that's part of the font design but I don't like it so we're just gonna remove that I'm gonna do the same here remove those and I think that's gonna be pretty good nope look at that little guy there's no reason for that so go ahead and clean this up a little bit and there you go looks a lot better so now we're just gonna go ahead and add two more contours and by switching to the contour tool I'm just gonna go ahead and change it to two steps and I'm gonna make it just a little bit larger and I'm going to go break those apart and then we'll have to ungroup them since it was two steps when you break the contour apart the two steps are grouped together you'll want to ungroup those select that first one I'm going to change the color to green and I'm going to do it in steps that way you can see what I'm doing um, we're going to grab this top object the one with the original outline I'm going to right click and drag it to the green, let go, and we're going to copy the outline. And then we'll just go to this feature back object and we'll fill it with the same green. And so now we have what looks like uh, two different materials sewn on top of each other this would this would be more of an applique type of look and which is very popular in high school sports letterman jackets that type of stuff um, you can mimic this within screen printing by using specialty inks and um, you know high density or suede puff inks for the stitching and so forth um, mixed with regular inks and that's just gonna give you a really really cool neat look Oop, I'm on the wrong layer which is what that error was just so you can see I went pretty quick and try to hit group and layer two is locked so switch back to layer one I can group these guys together and hit save so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna copy this we'll go to another page <coughs> and we're gonna ungroup and we're gonna show you the other quick easy way to mimic this look and I'm gonna duplicate this move it up I'm gonna go ahead and put it on its own layer and we're gonna hide it just for now and we'll zoom back into these and we don't need all these objects so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of these back too 
And we're going to go ahead and change the, we're just going to remove the outline. If you right click, it'll remove the outline. If you left click, it'll remove the fill. And so you can see, again, fairly easy. Um, right click removes the outline. Left click removes the fill. And we'll go to a lighter shade this time. <coughs> so, now the other quick default attribute way of creating this look. And as with everything in Corel, there's multiple ways to do the same thing. I'm going to get rid of the property, object properties docker there. So we can do some stuff over here real quick. Oh, layer 2 is locked. I'm on the wrong layer. Switch back to layer 1 and we'll hide this sucker. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw an ellipse real quick and then let's see we'll fill it with that color and there's no reason to have an outline on it. I'm going to switch to the uh, text tool F8 and just going to go ahead and didn't click hard enough. And I'm just going to type in a bunch of these. Just holding down the key will uh, can give you a whole string of those. Uppercase, lowercase, shouldn't really matter. Um, I do believe you could get away with um, <coughs> even using an I, uh, the letter I. I am going to switch to the round, aerial rounded, just to. Uh, mimic the outline version with the rounded tips and show you the two different ways we can achieve this. I'm going to duplicate this so we can see both ways. So this feature is just going to be you click on the text string, shift click your object, shift left click your object and go to text, fit text to path and we have a little too many there um, but this is where you're going to ad start adjusting your kerning and so forth um, to get the look that you're after we want these closer together I'm not sure if I'm, the, I'm pulling them apart so let's bring these closer together and we want the tips of those V's overlapping each other to mimic one single stitch rather than a bunch of these and zooming in probably would help a little bit Just get that look and with any of these effects you're just going to have to keep playing until you get it the way the exact look that you're after and we're getting there we're almost there just a little bit more I didn't want to go too far over and I'm just going to go ahead and stick with that. And we do have a little too many on there, so let's, uh, I think I deleted one. And if you click once, it's going to collect, select both. If you click again, it's just going to select the inside. I'm going to copy and paste. Bring this out a little bit and shoot it down. And that gives us, let's go ahead and uh, bring this up here again. That's going to give us the same look. Oh, I'm on the wrong page. Page 4. That's kind of giving us that same stitching effect. Um, <clears throat> and then the other way to do this, that's a, a different stitch style. Um, I'll show you, show you that a little bit later down the line. Um, the other way to do this is instead of typing a text string and then attaching, you can actually just have your object selected, switch to the text tool. I'm going to zoom in so we can see this hopefully. And if you hover just above the outside, the cursor switches to an A with a squiggly. That's text to a path. So then you would just go ahead and start typing in your V's. And you can get the same look. And it's the same procedure as 
the fitting the text to the path we previously did. Once you get all your V's on there or your I's, whichever one you're after, then do a little bit of kerning to get the uh, effect that you're looking for. Um, go ahead and delete that. Come back over to this one. And just to bring this a little further, since it is text on a path, you can select the, the text and depending on which style text you use you'll have the attributes to where you can italicize it, give it a little bit of more realistic look or and so forth um, so there's a lot of options you can do there and it all depends on the font you choose, the letters you use um, and so you can essentially just uh, apply this to anything. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all this. And we're going to straighten this text, get it back to the long text string. And we don't need that there anymore. And I'm going to go back to rounded. And we're going to. I'm going to do a real quick little little edit here. I'm going to break this apart. And we're just going to apply this to the C. Since it's such a fairly intense little uh, graphic um, with all the nodes, it could cause, cause issues. And so we're just going to uh, do the C to show you how this would work on just this little text string. Do a little bit of cleaning up here real quick because I know that's going to be an issue. And I didn't mean to delete both of those. So I've got my C selected select my text string, shift select, and fit text to path. And as you can see, it's given us that same same effect. And you can change the, uh, since we're using text, you get all these little options to change. And let's see, we did the rounded, and I'm going to click, let's see, make sure I get it on there. And then we're going to go ahead and just keep adding some more V's until we get this completely around. Since it was a more intense graphic, you can see it's that's why I just did the C instead of the entire word corral. Um, this feature isn't the best best option for this method. Um, it's a lot of text and so forth. So, and then you would again adjust your kerning and, uh, and let's just go to the outline pen real quick. Um, all right, I messed up there. We wouldn't do the outline pen. What we do is we'd come over here to the distance from path, and then that's where you can uh, move that to where it's. And again, you have to go in there and play with the size, the numbers, until you get it exactly the way you want it. We kind of lucked out based off of the size, um, other than the fact that probably would need to go a little bit lower. So let's try. Again, you just got to get in there and start playing until you get that until you get the look you're after. But that just shows you how you can uh, create that stitch effect uh, using letters as text on a path. Pretty simple, old school way. Um, and um, <clears throat> pretty neat little effect. So I think that's going to do it for the uh, quick and easy way to do, th to do it. And now we're going to move into the um, the more customized ways of uh, creating the the fall embroidery and stitching effects.
Okay, now we're going to discuss uh, creating some custom stitch patterns and uh, go ahead and uh, create some custom spray lists via the artistic media tool, uh, which is going to give us a lot more uh, flexibility and custom, true custom look. Um, what I would suggest is Googling um, what would be uh, textile industry or uh, just uh, industrial sewing machine patterns, stitches, um, and you'll come up with all sorts of results. And I've gone ahead and uh, got a couple of those. And what we're going to do is well, let's go ahead and import both of these real quick. I'm just going to do one of them smaller than the other, so we'll go ahead and kind of match that size. This is a very low resolution file, so <coughs> just some found images on the internet. But they're both satin stitches. Uh, essentially, um, you know this right this one over here on the right it would be a two point just down at the bottom then up at the top down at the bottom up at the top then you've got a three point and a four point um, pattern over here as well um, for the stitches and the little circles you can see here kind of a little fuzzy because of the uh, the image um, that's where the needle would penetrate the fabric and so forth. I'm going to go ahead and delete that and let's center this satin and I'm going to go ahead and lock this layer put a new layer on so we can um, go ahead and mimic this uh, satin stitch and there's a couple obviously a couple of ways you could do this as well. You can um, change the properties of your outlines um, to a different color so you can see Another way I like to do is just go ahead and apply a, um, a transparency to the bitmap that I'm tracing. Just, even just the default usually is enough. Um, sometimes you might want to go a little bit less or a little bit more and um, to where your outlines stand out you know a lot better. I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit and we're gonna switch to our freehand tool which is F5 and I'm gonna go ahead and click and hold my control key I'm constraining that way I create a straight line and then I'm gonna double click again and I'm gonna bring this one down. Um, <clears throat> you can use guides and so forth snap to guides and but just another little quick little trick here is to make sure these two are correctly the same size. I'll just switch to my shape tool and come up here and we'll align these nodes horizontally so now they're perfect. And then we're just going to go ahead and duplicate this. And again there's multiple ways you can do this. You can do this under transformations and depending on the size you'll have to input the different values for the positioning and so forth so just to make this easy um, let's see here I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate this once select this bottom node and I'm gonna undo that let's see make sure I have my snap to objects on and now it's snapped now I can just duplicate the rest and I'm going to go ahead and uh, select all these, marquee select them and control L uh, combine those and then got to go in here and make these we're going to join these nodes that way this is one continuous line and you don't really have to do this step this is where I um, I'm particular about everything. I want everything perfect and it'll save issues down the line. So now that we have our lines there, I'm just going to make them a little thicker so you can see. And there we go. So we've essentially just created 
a, a satin stitch and so now what we're gonna do is we are going to show you how how do you turn this into a uh, a sprayer and be able to do some really cool stuff really quick so I've got this in outline mode that way I can change attributes fairly quickly and easy uh, a little more flexibility than if they were um, <coughs> converted to, um, to objects and converted to curves so over here are outlines and over here it's actually an object so um, I have a little bit more flexibility with this for this exact feature of why we're doing so now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and select the artistic media tool on the toolbox it's this little squiggly line right here or the hot key, default hotkey is the eye and it's going to switch to the pen um, <clears throat> this is where this tool is great with uh, Wacom tablets and pressure sensitive tip pens and you can do some really cool drawings um, the default is going to be at the presets right here we want to come over here to the sprayer and you know again with any tool that you use the property bar switches to all the attributes and there's all kinds of defaults in here and it gives you the options to create your own custom ones um, you can even go in and edit the default ones adding removing doing there's, uh, there's just all kinds of stuff that you can do um, <clears throat> So now that we have this open, let's go ahead and open up the uh, artistic media docker, which will be right here. And this is going to be the easiest way to do this. And what we want to do right now, it's at the custom. And what we're going to go over here, we're going to get rid of the presets, and we're just going to have object sprayer. So now that we have just the sprayer clicked, I actually turned it off. Um, I've clicked on my object right here. And then you just come down to this little button right here, save, and click save. And the dialog that pops up, we're creating a new stroke. You want we're doing object sprayer, not brushes. So switch to object sprayer, click OK, and it's going to bring up another dialog to save as, and this is where you'll save. So we'll type this in, satin, and we'll go ahead and click save. Um, we're in the customization folders, and so you can actually create new fold your own folders. And so let's just go ahead and create a folder in this webinar stitches hopefully I spelled that right I'm an artist I, I can't type um, and there we go now uh, you scroll down to the very bottom of the list down here and you can see it's been added so essentially I can just click this button right that sprayer item right there and then just start drawing and it's gonna spray so we're zoomed in and so you can kind of see the pattern that it's given us right there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and create a straight line. And this works, you know, both freehand. Oh, got to actually switch to the proper tool. You can just draw freehand or you can apply to objects. So you would select your object and then just double click the the sprayer and then up here on the property bar is where you're gonna start playing with your different options and there we go I had had a large number up there so we just need to keep reducing this until we get to the the proper look So again, you know, this is where you have to just keep playing until you 
get it the way you you the look you're after so <clears throat> and it's also based on the size so you might wind up having to create multiple sizes depending on the object this as you can see this is uh, rather large so I'm gonna duplicate this move it to the side and I'm gonna just shrink it down about eh, let's see about halfway <coughs> I forgot to change all properties the outline and forgot to nope we got it scale with image that's why it got real real tiny so I'm gonna switch back to my artistic media tool I'm gonna click this go ahead and click save object sprayer okay and webinar stitching and satin satin small and so now we have added at the bottom of our list an even smaller one so let's see here I'm gonna go ahead and draw another straight line <coughs> nope accidentally clicked the uh, wrong one there we've got that added And then you just start playing and this is where depending on the size and the size of the shape you can um, you can start changing all the other attributes um, <coughs> so now that we showed you how to create that one real quick what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to this original Corel and I'm gonna copy and paste that and I'm going let's go ahead and open up our object manager so we can see what we're working with here and we're on page six so uh, let's see don't need that what we want to do is get rid of the outline move that back I'm gonna go ahead and change the color so you can see what we're doing here and I'm gonna just go ahead and get this added. Let, let's see, let me move this up real quick. <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and weld, weld, convert both of these to objects. Let's clean up these nodes again real quick. And I'm gonna delete this back one because we're gonna need a lot larger contour so get that cleaned up a little if I remember correctly there was a funky node around here and then there was one over here so it's good enough for government work right there so now what we'll do is go ahead and apply a contour we only want one but we want a rather large one so and I'm gonna go ahead and change this to a different color just for now just so we can see it easily break it apart and we're gonna select that top object open this back up as you can see we've got the two objects I'm on the green Corel and we'll switch to the sprayer and we'll double click and as you can see it just added and but let's go ahead and make a smaller one so essentially what we did was this make sure those two are aligned duplicate boom and once you get that first one in as long as you don't deselect you can just hit control D and it'll just continually duplicate in the exact same distance and position and I don't want to do that many because I want to combine 
So let's do just back up to these four and we'll combine these. And if you had snapped objects and grids and so forth, you could just continually create this pattern, you know, just with one simple stroke. You know, and again, or and then align. You know, again, many different methods to do the same, the same deal. And let's get our outline. Change our properties. Make sure scales on. And I think we're good to go. I'm gonna change this to a different color. Let's see here. We'll make this light green so it'll stand out. And as you can see, that would have been way too big. So we're going to make this a lot smaller to give us the general idea. And I think that's going to work. And then I'm just going to adjust my outline. I like that size right there, I believe. And let's do 0 0.75 just to give us a little bit of options. Alright, switch to the artistic media tool, I. We'll click on the object we want to turn into a sprayer. We'll click Save, Object Sprayer, OK. And we'll name it <coughs> Pink Satin. I'm going to hit, go ahead and hit Save. And as you can see, the pink one's now been added. <coughs> So actually I'm going to leave that up there and just going to nudge it up out of the way a little bit. And actually I'm just going to copy this. That way we can get Corel as large as possible. So we'll copy that and select the top object. And is I always do that to start clicking too fast. So I'm going to select it and then click it. And then now we need to start adding more. And because we made it real small, we're going to have to change this number. And this will be a lot lower number. So let's try 0 0.5, 0 0.1. It's getting a lot better. So now we can just start. Uh, <coughs> start lowering until we get get it a little bit closer and what we're going to do is go ahead and change the angle of rotation relative to path changed it to 90 degrees and then just hit enter and depending on <coughs> the the way you uh, you create your your pattern is going to determine on you know how you need to adjust these features that might have been a little too much, 90, so I changed it to 15, and that looks a lot better. So, <clears throat> now you can see, let's go ahead and make that original one. So, now that I filled it, you can see we're missing half of it. So, you know, we'll get rid of that fill, and then the one underneath will make solid and now it looks like it's been uh, it's got a nice nice satin stitch there I'm gonna I'm gonna do something here real quick and uh, see if we can't um, actually let's try this I'm gonna copy that undo and get rid of the satin there there we go now we'll shoot that back on. So now it looks like we've embroidered the word Corel, a piece of material with some satin. And I have some samples here of different stitch patterns. Again, do a Google search, uh, industrial, industrial machine stitch stitching patterns and so forth. There's so many different industries that use sewing and use different patterns. Um, these are different type of stitch patterns. 
stitch types. Uh, here's a couple different sewing machine patterns um, that you can find on the internet. And, <clears throat> and then some actual stitch types um, I want to show you. This is a satin stitch for uh, embroidery. And as you can see, we're kind of uh, mimicking that look with our uh, with our sprayer item. I'm going to go ahead and change the color of this to black so it stands out a little bit more. And as you can see, we've uh, done a pretty good job of mimicking that. Going in here, you're going to need to do some adjustments, um, but you can definitely get it a um, get it pretty darn close. So. Let's just go ahead and do it on a straight line. And let's see, 0 0.1. So, and I'm going to make this a red color. So, kind of see. So, as you can see, it's looking pretty darn close. Um, now, all the, this is the, the image that I imported, this big red one right here that's actually what it looks like in a uh, digitizing program and these show you where all the the needle points and stuff go in so when you're creating your your actual stitch pattern um, like this one right here that we showed earlier you know essentially what you can do is go in there and add a little bit of a uh, Let's get rid of that. You know, a little, you know, if you had that on every little stitch point, you'll see that uh, it'll it'll mimic a little bit better. So, you know, the more detail you get in, you know, even the better. Um, even with with this look, you could go in here and that's 7.8 so let's make this 6.5 and <clears throat> as you you know give it an even outlined type look as well so the more detail you put into your actual spray sprayer uh, the more realistic it, it is going to look um, so one more feature with with this uh, type of effect I'm gonna nudge this up out of the way <coughs> and I'm gonna go ahead and close these dockers real quick and let's save so I am gonna go back to the original and we're gonna add a new page here real quick we'll copy this um, bring up our properties so I can see what we're working with and what we're gonna do is we're going to import so, wrong one let's see pattern stitch samples I need to go up one more so we've got some raster textures and let's see which color we've got the pink so I'm going to do the blue real quick. This is a texture found online, um, royalty free. Make, just make sure if you use a uh, purchase um, texture that you actually purchase that texture. And I'm just going to do this quickly, and you can create it your own bitmap pattern out of this. Um, make it a default and I'm just going to do a real quick power clip <clears throat> just to just to show and zooming that down and let's see a fix arrange excuse me power clip place inside and I want that outside I probably should have zoomed in yes <clears throat> so so let's just nudge that one out of the way. Arrange power clip. It's going too fast. I do this all the time. I start clicking way too fast. Arrange power clip. Place inside. There we go. 
Now we'll remove the fill. Bring this down. And then <coughs> we have the outline here position. Which one do we have this one? We have on the outside, so let's move this one to the inside. And then Aha, that's what it was. We had an outline on it. I knew something was funky. So, there we moved it to the inside. That doesn't look right. We need that contoured. So, let's go ahead and apply a contour real quick. 0 0.5. Actually, 0 0.05, excuse me. is isn't should be a good enough and then we want to select this power click clipped object and it gives you some nice little tools here so you can extract it and select the power click is what we want I'm gonna hit copy and then what I'm gonna do is paste Send it back, effects, arrange, excuse me, power clip, place inside, and we'll move that to the back, and now we can pull our outlines on top. <coughs> and take this even further, we'll go in and start sampling some of the uh, colors to get us a... nice color to uh, change that stitch. Um, can't really see it so let's go ahead and try a darker color. <coughs> yeah, it's a little better. And I'm going to zoom out so now you can see um, that looks even more. Let's also you because I, the pattern, you can kind of see the pink in the background. If I were to just change that color real quick. Oop, wrong one. Need to do it on the one below it. That kind of gets rid of it. That's why you'd actually want to go in there and make that a true two-color pattern. And you wouldn't see that. Um, but this right here just goes to show some of the some of the power that you can do and then again um, I'm going to select just this object and I'm going to go ahead and put just a default outline on it and we're going to apply our satin stitch to it so we're going to switch to the eye tool open up our artistic media We've got our path selected and let's see let's weld this get rid of it from being text 0 0.25 0 0.1 and again you just gotta keep playing with the numbers until you get it get it correctly I think we did a uh, 15 degree angle on this and relative to path. So, zoom that down, mer nudge that down, <coughs> and actually I want to add some of these colors. into our um, little document palette there. So we'll click OK. That's a rather large bitmap. I probably should have reduced the size. Um, that's why it's uh, doing a little bit of thinking there. So actually I'm going to go in here into this power clip and let's uh, convert this real quick. Let's do 100 RGB 
this will make uh make things go a little faster we had two objects so I'd need to do the same thing but what I'm just gonna do is copy get inside this one delete it paste nudge the same amount and so now it's going a little bit faster so there we go now it looks like we've uh, stitched that uh, puffy material um, and as you can see you know little pieces are gonna need to be edited again and that's you know the fine detail um, that's what's gonna make or break your design um, the more detail the the more accurate it's going to look. Um, so um, <clears throat> I do want to show you one. Whoop! Let me uh, just go ahead and bring that back where it was. Get down there. We'll hit save. Move down here, and we're going to copy this very original one again. And nudge this up control Q gonna convert these and I'm gonna go ahead and add the contour make this rounded this time and let's bring this up <coughs> Now that power clip was just one way you can add uh, fills. Uh, another way is you can go to the uh, edit fill dialog which is F11 and you have all sorts of uh, default fills, uh, texture fills. Click this little fly out gives you all kinds of uh, different uh, bitmap textures where you can change the colors and bitmap pattern fills again you would open up the fly out and <clears throat> see I'm clicking too fast and it's it's trying to think and load all these different patterns um, so we'll just give it a second there we go and then you've got all these right here uh, you even have a You even have a search option um, and right now we're on the content exchange and this is where you can create your own patterns upload it to the exchange and share with other users and these are some of the different ones other users have created and you can drag them to your favorites and th th there's just all kinds of options that you can um, you can do um, Let's see here. Oh no, what did I click? What did I click? <coughs> okay, there we go. I'm going to go ahead and drop this one down size. And just to show you the different options um, 0 0.25. That's just a little too much. So uh, it's probably uh, 0.5 was going to do it for this one, just for the size that we are. And then I'll get rid of this fill, bring this down, and change the outline color just so you can see it. We're going to get rid of the default, or switch it back to a default solid line. And we'll go back up to the sprayer. Zero point zero five, and just off of memory, fifteen degrees relative to path. And let's say we made that black, or can't really see that, so. Again, you got to just get in there and play. Um, but this right here gives you another idea. Um, and this is just a simple satin stitch. Um, 
Control Save. Go to the next page. Again, uh, you do a little bit of Google searching. Um, there's all kinds of uh, stitch patterns and fill, you know, fills, all kinds of stuff um, that you can uh, import. And just wanted to uh, pull this one up and show you, based off of a couple different patterns that were found on the uh, um, the internet, um, cover stitch satin stitch, edge on seam, zigzag. Uh, what we did earlier was uh, kind of, you know, the zigzag is almost like the satin stitch using the letter V. It uh, looks like the zigzag as well. Uh, you, then you've got zippers. Um, one thing I do want to mention and show you is um, we're going to kind of we're going to do a little funky uh, make it look like a uh, open zipper and show you how the sprayers can work with that as well so go back to our artistic media I already have all these in here um, for the benefit of the webinar um, but this shows you how you can create them but um, again you just go on here and start playing until you got the, uh, the look that you were after now the one thing with the zippers um, is, uh, like I had mentioned earlier, you saw how I uh, mirrored this. Well, technically it really didn't mirror because this, it mirrored the line, the path, but it didn't mirror the actual <coughs> pattern. So I'm going to break that pattern. That way we just have the path and let's see CV copy and paste this right here is the one we the sprayer we use to create these these zippers right there and then what you'll need to do to create the other zipper is mirror this and create a new uh, sprayer item right here so this would be zipper right and then you'd have one for zipper left this would be zipper left so I'm going to go ahead and select my path and then there's our zipper left and then I think I did 0 0.25 and I'm just doing this real quick and then you would just adjust these to line these up and that kind of doing some tweaking um, there's a little more than there needs to be um, but that would uh, give you that uh, give you that open zipper look um, you know whether it be say a pair of shorts drawing with the mouse really quick so there's your open pair of shorts right there <laughs> Um, but again, just to just to show you the uh, power of uh, the uh, sprayers, and with all the different zipper patterns, um, stitch patterns, and and uh, so forth, you can come up with some really really cool designs. Um, and here's on this page right here are some other pattern options. These are also different stitch patterns from different um, industries and actual stitches and a lot of these I already have in so I'm just gonna go ahead and you know, create this line real quick and let's open this up and let's see so this one right here because it was created vertically gonna hit 90 degrees to rotate it and 0 0.75 0 0.5 and there we go and that gives us a, a different type of stitch pattern as well so you know you can apply these to all sorts of uh, logos um, graphics um, to create you know create both textures, boundaries, um, all types, you know, the, the options are endless. 
what you can do with these. So um, I hope uh, this uh, webinar was a little informative and you learned how to uh, create some of your own sprayer items. Um, we focused on you know stitching and embroidery and um, but I you can apply this to anything. Um, you can create uh, bullet holes. You can create and spray those along a path. You can create um, rivets for if you are rendering out an, an airplane or you know uh, a locomotive engine or something that has rivets all over it. Um, easy way to apply these. Um, and again, the more detail you you use the better um, the more realistic it's going to be and just to do a uh, final we will um, we'll create one last one and <clears throat> I'm gonna make this a little bit small and we're gonna create these it's a group of objects too it's a group of six objects so this URL create a balloon. Save it in my uh, folder here, and I'm gonna hit save. Move to another page. Switch to my tool. Grab my balloon. just draw some squiggly lines and now we have a bunch of curl balloons floating all over our design <coughs> so there you have it we have <coughs> pretty much concluded our um, our webinar for the day and I just want to pop this this little uh, last little bit up and uh, just uh, mention that um, if you go to my website www.fluiddsn.com go to the resources page um, I am gonna have a couple of st stitch types in a PDF format that you'll be able to download and import into import or open into Corel and uh, you'll be able to easily um, turn those into uh, patterns for your for your designs. This is what's going to be the extra content. Um, I list down here are previews of what they'll look like on the path, and these will be your actual objects that you use to create your sprayer items. So I hope the uh, webinar was uh, informative and is giving you all sorts of ideas to jazz up your designs. Stay Corellian, my friends.